Welcome back to the Senior Writers Show. Moving on from discussing, um, it was something, not interesting enough. Um, obviously I have no motivation left, as you might tell from the name of our show, but life goes on. And on that note, there's been much talk on this uh, economist who has been known to relate everything to economics. Here with us today is Lydia Stone, and she will be discussing how a dog's life can be compared to economic terms. She probably thought, who doesn't love dogs? So let's just compare a dog's life with economic terms. Well, I hope this is going to be good because I sure hate economics. <laughs> let's welcome her to the stage. Don't touch me. Hi, thanks for having me today. So explain exactly how you're going to fit economic terms into a dog's life. I'm going to be showing videos about a dog named Ellie's food, possessions, the game of fetch, and various other topics. Now this dog, Ellie, is very particular and likes to only eat from the brand Eurasian. Ellie's demand for Eurasian is inelastic because of her pickiness. So, her owners are willing to pay a good amount of money for that particular brand. But what if for some reason the owner could not purchase the origin brand? Although, sometimes you may find that the pet store will be out of a particular brand. The owner has found that a substitute for origin can be the brand Royal Cape Nine Labrador Retriever Food because the dog won't know. Let's see, what are you drawing? Well, Lydia talking about the dog's fin for origin being an elastic got me wondering what the graph would look like, so I'm drawing it out. Do you want to see? Mm -mm. I do. That's so cool, you're very good at drawing in elastic graphs. Callie, do you even know how to read this graph? Mm, not really. Well, basically it's showing that no matter what the cost is, you'll always buy three bags of a ride and dog food. That's exactly it. Oh uh, well, I still really don't care. <laughs> now, to continue, I'm going to be discussing how dogs possess both durable and non-durable goods. Most dogs wear collars, and from it just being around their neck, it doesn't get a lot of wear and tear. Could you explain to our audience your definition of what a durable and non-durable good is? Of course. Durable goods have to last more than three years, like a car or a bike. Non-durable goods, however, are short-term items such as food or clothing. So we can relate these collars back to being a durable good because the collar can last a long time, unlike some of Ellie's toys that could only last a couple months, which is an example of non-durable good. Because a dog uses their sharp teeth to play with the toys, they're often destroyed quickly, making it a non-durable good. Paw, Ellie, paw. Other paw, other paw. Ellie, paw. Good girl. According to this, the next topic you are going to discuss is currency. How is she going to relate this quiz to econ? Just, just smile and continue. How exactly do dogs have currency? Well, when you think about it, the primary medium of currency for a dog is a treat, as it meets all the criteria for both the characteristics and functions of money. They are portable between places, durable as they are not easily crumbled, divisible as they come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and scarce to dogs as they only get them as a reward. Treats can also act as a medium of exchange between the dog and their owner. A treat to a dog is comparable to money with a person, which makes it a measure of value for the dog. Treats can also be stored, allowing them to be saved until an opportune time. These treats can function as commodity money due to their alternate use of, as a source of nourishment. There is also no singular national currency for dogs as there is large variety in the types of treats given to dogs. Ready? Go get it. Come here. Come here. No, come here.
<laughs> Everyone knows that a dog's favorite pastime is to play catch. Now in this instance, how can a simple game be applied to economics? Well, when you think about it, playing catch with a dog defies the law of diminishing marginal utility. Because they get the same amount of excitement as they do when the first ball is thrown as when the tenth ball is thrown. The law of diminishing marginal utility is shown that people get generally less joy out of the same repetition of an action, whereas dogs prove that they find the same amount of joy. Now, the way that ball was thrown reminded me of a different graph. That arc matched the, that of a production possibilities curve. But as that has no relation to the topic at hand, we're going to ignore what Lexi just said. Okay, Callie. We're almost done, ladies. Be cordial with one another for a moment. Okay. Well, there you have it, folks. You really can relate economics to everyday life and a dog. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Bye. Well, that was boring. Did you even learn anything? I learned how to sleep with my eyes open. Huh. Honestly. Um, Oh, well, while she was talking about what she was talking about, I drew this awesome graph. It's the normal distribution curve, and then the paranormal distribution curve. It just has a ghost. It looks hilarious. Terrible joke. Do you not see the ghost? Stop. Whatever. Anyway, well, thank you for our audience for joining us today, and I hope you survived that very lengthy economics discussion. As we wrap up today's show, we'd like to give a shout out to Dan Bates for hopefully not failing us and letting us graduate high school.